Hey everybody, it's Justin Fox. I'm at Mojo Tone once again, and I'm standing here with Mr. David Shepard. David oversees pickups and guitar parts here at Mojo Tone, and I've convinced him to show me a couple tips on soldering today. Um, David, there's been a lot of times, especially on the road, when I've had problems with my guitars, and I've always kind of known, you know, from being uh, around you guys so much, what I could do to fix them, but I've never really had the confidence in my soldering to uh, open it up and do it myself. I was wondering if you could kind of guide me through a wiring harness uh, solder up today and give me some tips and pointers. Absolutely. So the first thing is your soldering iron. Obviously it has to be a halfway decent one. Mm -hmm. um, you want something at least 35 watts. Um, this is a variable temp one, so I can make it hotter, cooler for different types of things. Um, this is 60 watts. I really recommend that if you're doing a lot of stuff. Right. Um, and then the solder is important too. The uh, I, we use lead free for obvious reasons, um, but if you're doing stuff yourself at home, I recommend leaded rosin core solder. It's, it's much, much easier to work with. Um, the thinner, the better. And uh, this is Kester 44 rosin core. You can get, and you can get all this stuff at your kind of hardware store. Yeah, we even sell this stuff on, okay. on our website. So, um, so and the us. soldering irons as well. So great, we can get them all supplied right through the website. Absolutely. So what, uh, what's, what are the steps on this? When we go to solder up a wiring harness, do you have a kind of an order of, of processes that you like to go through? Right, so I, I turn the iron on, I let it get, get to temperature uh, before I use it. You know, make sure all your electronics are mounted where you need them. Uh, kind of plan out your wiring, you either have a wiring diagram or something that you're gonna copy or reference. Right, so this is our, this yeah, is our reference piece here. Exactly, so this is our, our 250K uh, standard strat assembly. That's what you want it to look like. Uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. But the bottom line is getting good solid connections and uh, making sure that, that everything's wired correctly. Uh, so first thing I would do is, you know, this is a strat pick guard. A lot of times you have a shield plane or a ground plane like this, mm -hmm. uh, which grounds everything together. But I also like to use a bus wire on the back of the pots to connect everything there as well. Okay. Um, reason being, if you're on a gig and your potentiometer gets loose or your something something gets loose on the guitar and you don't have this, then you're gonna cut in and out. So if that connection breaks between this shield there, you might get some noise. Right, right, or completely cut out. That would be bad too. Right, right. So <laughs> that's why I add this on there in case something like that does happen. Absolutely. So when you're, when you're soldering to the side of a pot like this, a volume pot, um, do we need to score that up a little bit or is it going to? So the CTS pots, you don't have to, they're solderable. Okay. Uh, most of your nicer um, electronics are, are easier to solder to. Your, a lot of the overseas stuff, they'll zinc plate the, the pots or they'll put this crazy coating on it mm -hmm. and you have to sand it or file it before you actually solder to it. Like I said, some of those situations where I've tried and not been yeah. happy with the result may have been, right. been part of it. Absolutely. So, uh, so these are, you know, CTS, CRL, Switchcraft, those kinds of components you don't have to sand or scuff up. They'll, they'll take solder That's perfectly. Good to know. We yeah. can get those off the website as well. Absolutely. So David, show me where to start wiring up this harness. Okay, so I'll start with all the grounding first. Uh, use the bus wire here. Uh, normally you can bend back the tab here on the volume pot. You wanna ground one side of the volume pot. Uh -huh. Does it matter which side? Yes. If, if it's a standard audio taper, you're gonna do this side right here. Okay. Um, here I'm running the bus wire just through the eyelet and then connecting it to the back of the pot. That's one, one way to do it. That's easier to me because everything okay. just kind of holds together. Great. Um, when you're soldering, you wanna make sure the tip is clean. You can see that tip looks pretty cloudy. So I just wipe it on the sponge and then it's nice and shiny and ready to go. And then you wanna make sure you have clear access to what you're doing. And I'll set the iron down and kind of touch both the back of the pot and the bus wire, get the heat going, and then flow the solder into it. And then you can see it just kind of flow out and onto the pot. So you don't have to leave it sitting on, on there for long. If you no. Have the right kind of soldering iron. It's a feel, you gotta look at it, you gotta pay attention. If it's too hot, the solder will just start to bleed out everywhere. If it's too cold, it'll just sit there as a bead and it won't 
it won't actually flow. Right. So you want to get that temperature to where it flows out pretty easy. Um, and solder will flow down into things, so you want to be careful when you're soldering lugs to make sure that it doesn't flow all the way down and mm -hmm. into the pot or switches too. All right, same thing. I clean the tip before every connection and put the uh, iron down, kind of angle it across the uh, wire and touch the back of the pot at the same time. And then you can kind of just see it flow out. Yeah. And you never want to blow on the solder connection. People do that all the time to try to cool it off. Well, move it maybe. Yeah, you don't want it to move, but what when you blow on it with with air like that, you're getting a cold joint. You'll see it get cloudy, and oh, okay. You want you want it just to just to cool off by itself. So good solder joints are shiny; they flow out. Um, each point is making contact. Yeah. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to have your contact on top of the solder. You know, you want right. it, you want it on the pot or on the lug. Yeah, I noticed that you let it sit. You let the iron sit on the, the joint for a minute until it kind of spread to where you wanted it and then lifted it away. Exactly. Yeah. So I think a lot of the times I try to jump off of it too quickly. Yeah, and if you go on and off, on and off, you're just building up layers of cold solder. Okay. So now we've got one ground uh, wire set. Are we going to do another one? Uh, sure. So I'm gonna run one to the switch. Yeah, now what? Now I haven't really seen this um, ground wire going from the last home pot to the five way before. Is that um, something that you guys do on every wire up? Yeah, the main reason we do that is so that you can transfer the electronics off of this and onto your pick guard and it holds together. And maybe does it provide some extra grounding as well? It does, you're grounding the frame of the switch. Just in to, case. To the back of the pots. Okay, but, but it, it really it makes transferring it to other pit guards easier as well. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to do it, but. We go the extra mile, right? That's it. So this is where you kind of need the, the helping hands. Can I put my finger right there? Yeah. So this is where you can Use your yeah, helping hands. Is that what it's called? Helping hands. Yeah. Looks more like a robot lizard. I think that's what we should call it. So anyway, I just put there's a there's a rivet that holds the switch together on both ends. I'm just putting the end of the wire into the rivet there. kind of moving the tip around to get it. Just letting the solder flow a little bit there. Yep. And then it makes a, makes a contact to there. And then same right there. So there's all your grounding minus the, uh, the jack and the ground wire from the tremolo claw of the guitar or the bridge. All right, so now that we've got the basics of soldering and the grounds done, let's grab your guitar and uh, I'll kind of guide you through how to solder the rest of it. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to try to show you a couple of bad solder joints. I haven't tried this, so. Do you want to hold this me. wire for you? No, this is good, because yeah. this is showing the wire is not actually touching the back of the pot. Okay. Um, and it's just kind of loose, you know, and it's moving around. You definitely don't want to do that when you're soldering uh, because it'll, when the wire moves and then it, the solder cools, you might get a bad solder joint. Uh, but I'm just kind of getting on there with the iron, struggling with the wire. You know. And see, I'm stacking. There you go. That's a bad solder joint. <laughs> but look how the bead is. It's not, it's not actually flowing out. 
That looks, that looks like some of my work. But can you see that? Yeah. It's just kind of a blob, and there's no there's no like flow out on the back of the pot, and you can just take that and break it off. Wow. Um, you don't want to have that. You want to make sure that you're actually flowing it, and you can see it kind of flow out. Um, another thing to look out for when you're going through your lugs, some people just stick it in there like that. But there again, if it's moving around, it can give you a bad connection. So if it's moving around on you, just loop it. Put yourself a little hook on it. And run it in like that. Okay. And that'll hold it into place and make your make your soldering more stable. Excellent. There you go. Uh, here's something to look out for on switches. Maybe I can get this in the video. Because this is a big one that people call up all the time and say that the switch is not working or it won't go into one of the positions. Uh huh. Um, and that's because they overheated it. So. Solder flows down. Um, your switches have your lugs up here, and then the connection happens down here. If you're putting too much solder on there or overheating it, that solder is just going to flow right down into the switch. And you see people do this all the time. See it? It's flowing down in there. Boom. Yeah. And it closed the switch up, and now you can't use the switch anymore. It's completely, completely ruined. Wow. So I purposely uh, ran the temperature back on the iron to where it's not hot enough to flow the solder very good. And this is kind of an example of what a bad soldering iron would do for you. So, and also not having the uh, the wire secure. You want it, you want it secure, and you want it touching exactly where it's going. So it's just kind of floating here. You can see it's just, well, I've got a little bit of a connection there, but that's not a good solid connection. The wire is not touching the back of the pot. It's just kind of sitting on top of the solder. I could probably yank that solder connection right off. So what I want to do is make sure that I'm flowing, getting the temperature up on the iron. Making that contact smooth. And then the solder's float out nice and easy. All right, so going into the lug here, um, just sticking it in there like this and making a solder connection. It's okay if the wire is secure, but if it's moving around while the solder's cooling, then you're gonna end up with a bad connection. So if that's a problem, just put a little hook in the uh, in the wire and loop it into the lug like that so it, it doesn't move around on you. And then that way you can come in and make an easy connection. Okay, so we've got everything uh, transferred over to your pick guard, what we started. Um, and you've got your pickups ready to solder to it. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and make your connections from the switch uh -huh. to your cone pots and your volume pot. Okay. Uh, since everything's kind of easy to get to. And we pre-cut some wire here, I guess. Yeah, so cloth covered wire, you can push it back. Yeah. And you don't have to strip it or anything. You just push it back to where you want it. I tried that once, it didn't work too well. Uh, There's a lot of thread everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can make a mess of it or, or right. not, but... Uh, so your volume, volume pot connection, um, you want to go to that lug right there. Uh huh. Are we going to go in from the bottom or from the top? Usually I'll go in from the bottom. Yeah. Go ahead and... Now should we loop it or are we just going to try for straight first? You can loop it to hold it into place like I was telling you. Uh huh. Or you hook it. Right. You don't want it 
hanging around like that when you're trying to solder it. So I can take these pliers and put a little loop in the end, right? Yep. Just to let it hang out in there. Well, I don't think I got my loop good enough here. I'm no Dave Shepard. Okay. So I'll start so with there that. There you go, man. That's that'll hold in place while you solder it. Okay. Um, now there is also another wire that that goes that connects from here to here. So we go ahead and put that Connect, in. It bridges both sides of the switch. So I'd go ahead and do that before you close that that lug up. All right. And it needs to be about that length right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And this is a short run wire. So what I'll usually do is I'll kind of pull the wire out like uh -huh. that and then just cut the uh, cloth uh, okay and then that way you don't end up with the uh, <laughs> the cloth all bunched up on right and now for this one uh, uh should i go in from the top on this one yep. just because of how we're, yep. we're coming through there all right should i use my pliers to kind of yeah, yeah. This down. whatever you got to do, man. Make it work. If I can make it work. Yeah, that'll work. Man. Yeah. And this is pre-tinned wire, too, so you don't have all the strands coming apart. Right. Yeah. Um, it's really good to work with. Yeah, it feels robust. So another thing to consider too is your insulation on your wire uh -huh. if it's jammed up against your lug there it's right. going to act like a heat sink and it's not going to let the solder flow into the lug very well so i try to get the insulation back away from the uh like from that. the connection yeah yeah and then you can push it back when you're done after you're done but you you know just you can get it up pretty close but just make sure it's not like jammed up on it okay so we should start with the double over here go ahead and make that connection we got our soldering gun at the proper temperature. You clean the tip before you oh, use yeah. it. Don't forget that. Right. So we're gonna apply. We're gonna put the gun to the wire. For and a you want to touch pressure. everything with the iron. Try to touch both wires and the lug. I'm going from this way then. All right. All right. Now flow the solder into the connection. You'll see it flow, and then you're done. Let me get this side. Yep. A little bit, a little bit more heat. Just so you don't want to do, you don't want to touch it and bring the iron off. Okay. So flow some more. If you have a, if you have that a connection like that, go yeah. ahead and flow a little bit more down into it. There you go. Now you're yeah. good. Oh, see when it came off, it made a nice little. Yeah. Bead there. Yeah, you can you get an eye for it. You kind of see see the solder flow out. All right. And then what's the next step here? We're gonna connect okay. this to Yeah, so you connect that to the volume pot. Which which uh so post it's gonna go to the outside there. Right. Now I probably won't would you say maybe we don't need to put a hook in this one? Or should I? You can. I mean, you don't really need to. Yeah. I'll kind of maybe push it down, push it down like that. Okay. And then that way it's kind of held into place. Yeah. But yeah, again, this is the pre tin stuff, which is super nice because wherever you kind of move it and push it, it yeah. stays. It's a lot easier to deal with. Go ahead and connect that one then. Yep. And just make sure you don't have any uh, stray wires. Um, right. There you go. That's good. All right. Now, so now you're going to connect your tone controls, All right. um, which for your guitar, you said you don't want tone on the middle. You just want your tone control for bridge and neck. Yeah, this is the Eric Johnson um, Stratocaster. And from the diagram we looked up, that's how it's supposed to be wired. So, OK, OK. So looking at that, you're going to be going for your uh, your bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. You're going to be going to that lug there. Okay. And if you were doing your middle pickup, you would normally uh, jump these two together. Right. 
to get your bridge and middle sharing the, the tone control. For this tone pot? Yeah, for that tone pot. But since you don't want the middle connected, just go to the bridge, the one that connects to the bridge pickup. Okay. And just run underneath and down and then over to the uh, outside. This, this post? No. This there one. you go, yep. Okay. So this one looks about the right length then, doesn't it? It's yeah. maybe a little long, should I trim it? You can. Um, actually, maybe this one would be good, or did you already cut that one? Uh, this one, let's, let's check the, let's see. It's a little, that's a, well. You can use that for the other yeah, one. Yeah, we'll do that for the other one, we'll use this one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut just a hair off of this then. It doesn't matter, because you can still, you can just tuck it down, it and, down and okay, I'll do get that the one. wires out of the way. So I'm putting my hook on here for this, since I'm going to be going under. And then I'm going to use these pliers. Can, can you use pliers like this? Am I supposed oh, to do yeah. this? Yeah, definitely. Anything to help you. Yeah. I need it. I need the help. There you go. Are we happy with that? Yeah, as long as it's held into place, just make sure... See how oh, this yeah. wire's sticking it's up and up. the insulation's jammed on that? Mm -hmm. So I could pull that down when I when yeah. I go to solder or just push it down. Yeah, just kind of get it. You may have to redo that one after yeah, you make yeah. that one connection. Let me do this. But yeah, you can kind of. Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the tone wires uh, soldered in and now we're gonna solder in the tone cap. So, Give me a little rundown on this, David. Okay, so this is our vitamin T capacitor. Uh -huh. um, and it's hermetically sealed, and there's a metal casing on the outside. So one end of the cap is actually connected to the outside casing. Um, that's the end that you need to solder to ground. You can see how it's closed on one side, down against the lead, and then it's actually open on the other side. Okay. So the side that's closed around the lead, that's actually connected to the outer casing. That's the side you need to ground. Let me look in there. When you make the connection here, you're gonna wanna, you can go ahead and trim it up. About like that. Uh huh. Right. So you're gonna jump the uh, open side of the cap between these two lugs, between the outside of that one and the center of the other one. And sometimes you need some needle nose to help you a little bit. Yep. Get in there. Get your hole. Hold on, I got it now. Sit that. Right there. Okay. Got it in there? Yeah. All right, so then you can kind of put the cap where you want it. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's not hanging over off the side too much to where you can't get the pick guard down. That's pretty good. It's centered over the back of the pot. Is this through the eyelet enough? That's through the eyelet there. So you can go ahead if you want and make those two connections. All right. You just want to make sure you're not contacting any other points, which you're not. So All you're right. good to go, man. Okay, so I need to ground this to the side of the pot. You right? can ground it to the side if you want to get real nice and neat about it, or you can just come around like this. All right, so now we're tone capacited. Yes, so next thing you want to do is connect all your pickups. All right, this so, is where I always get confused. Right. When I've looked at five ways before. Okay, so I'd connect the ground wires first. Okay. Uh, when you have a bunch of pickup wires like that, mm -hmm. you're going to have to kind of really hold it down and solder with the other hand. Mm -hmm. So what I'll normally do is I'll put solder on, on here and I'll go ahead and put solder on the back of the pot. And when you put solder on this ahead of time, is that called tinning? Yeah, it's called pre-tinning. So I'll pre-tin that, which it sort of is right now, but I'm going to add more to it. So I'm going to add a little more. Yeah, you're going to kind of build it up on there a little bit and okay. then you're going to pre-tin the back of the pot. And then all you got to do is hold this down where you want it and melt the two connections together. All right. So I'm gonna... Now, when you go to, to do this pre tinning do you put the solder iron on the you bottom? You can do that, yep. Wait for it to get hot. Yep. Yeah, it should just flow right into the wires and go, go back and forth a little bit. That's good. All right. So there, 
you got a nice build up on there. Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> no, that's 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 good, man. And then go ahead wherever you want it to solder. You want to go ahead and put a uh, spot, spot right but don't let it flow out too much there. So just put it on the pot for a second. Yep. Now go ahead and flow it on a little bit more. That's good. Oop. There you go. So now, now you can actually hold this with your pliers because it'll yep. get hot. Yeah. And then just hold it down to that connection and then put the iron on top. Kind of mash it together. Yeah. Until you see it just completely flow out on the pot. There you go. You're done. Pretty easy. Yeah. But that's a real good one for any hard to solder things. Yeah, that pre, worked great. pre tin both connections and then just kind of weld them together. Okay, so we've got the tone wires, the tone capacitor. We've got grounds and we've got grounds for the pickups yep. solder to it. So now all that's left is to wire the pickups to the switch, correct? That's correct. So you got got to trace which one goes to what pickup. Right. So there's your neck pickup. All right. I don't want too much coming out, but I'm giving myself some room here. So on a five way, it's so it's always opposite on a five way switch. You got backwards, right? you want to think you would think that, oh, well, the neck neck is closest this way so you would solder there but it's the other way around your neck is actually going to be over here because when you move the switch lever it's moving the moving the other direction okay and, would, and for these would you come up from the bottom or come up down i usually go up and over the top yeah i would uh you want to put a loop on it put a loop on it kind of hook it in there okay and then make sure that this uh and go ahead and push the cloth up as close as you can without it touching the actual lug How's that look? Looks terrible. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's perfect, man. Okay. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, man. Looks good. All right. So then we've got All right, so neck. that one, yeah, you want to go ahead and kind of get the wires set where you want it. Okay. Oh, that may be a problem in the future. Let's see. No, you're good. Right. Now, do you do you guys normally tape these? Yeah, you can you use a uh, zip tie or, yeah, or tape or whatever. Um, but as long as you have the wires going over right where they're going through the routes correctly. Why is this one darker? So that's your, your middle pickup. Fender color codes are middle pickups. Sneaky. Yep. Very cool. So now we know that it's the middle. All right. So I'm going to put a little, this has got a little solder on it. Should I get that off there before I loop it or don't even worry about it? If it's, if it's a big glob or it's in the way you would, but that's nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming in from the top again. Yep. We got it in there. Now, there should I go. push that sleeve a little closer before I do that, or we can do that after we get it connected? Um, you can go ahead and get it where you want it. Yeah. Before you solder it, because sometimes the inside kind of melts a little bit. Right. And then you can't move the, the insulation at all. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I'm not following procedure here. I had to clean the tip of that soldering iron. A little more solder. There you go. All right. One last and then go ahead piece and to go. Kind of tuck that where you want it. Tuck it in there. All right. And then there was one. one. Then there was one. All right. Well, now I know. I'm going to flip this around a little bit just because it's like twisting in a weird way. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. I mean, that's okay, but you could put a little bit more on there. Put a little dab on. 
Let's do a dab of these. Ooh, happy sour. Okay. All right. All right, and then we'll tuck this. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, David, let's get this into the guitar and make sure everything's working. Sounds good, man. Thanks. Thank you. So David, thanks for guiding me through this. Um, I learned a lot and I feel a lot more confident in my soldering skills now. You did good, man. Thank you. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I guess that's important, right? Yeah. Let's see. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. As always, for more information, visit mojotone.com. We'll see you next time.